Welkom bij Topnames. Uh, lange tijd zei ik uh, iedere week vanuit de Wagen in Amsterdam. Maar we hebben een uh, nieuw onderkomen gevonden. We zitten in de Stadshuiskamer uh, in, uh, aan de Amstel, vlakbij uh, ja. bij de Amstelstekel. Hartje stad. Hartje stad, hartstikke mooie plek. Dus hier de volgende keer zorgen dat jullie ook een klein beetje kunnen zien dat dit echt een huiskamer is. Want uh, er zit een mooie, uh, achterin kunnen de tafel zitten voor lekker op de bank uh, uh, de uitzending volgen. Ja, dus uh, wie om dinsdagavond 9 uur een uh, zin heeft om een, een biertje te komen drinken van onze biersponsor Bier en Co. Is ook hier toch van harte welkom? Ah, absoluut, die hebben we meteen even mooi ja. meegepikt zeker. Ja. Ja, ik ben trots op je. Ja. Hey, um, ja, goed, wij zijn net terug uit, uit Amerika, South by Southwest. Heb je kunnen volgen, als je dat niet hebt gedaan, kijk op de site voor, voor onze verslagen... Um, in uh, Utrecht was er gisteren een congres, een uh, internationaal Seeds to Meet congres. Uh, twee van de aanwezigen daar zijn vandaag uh, uh, bij ons te gast om te vertellen hoe zo'n concept uh, elders, uh, elders gaat. Uh, hi, uh, who are you? I'm Guy Guilherme. Glad to be here with you guys. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you're here for the Seeds to Meet uh, yes, uh, to, Congress? To the Global Seeds to Meet Conferences. Yeah, That's so, right. so, so what, what do you do uh, with uh, Seeds to Meet? Well, actually in, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, where I'm from, we are now building a, a collaborative community of co-working owners uh, to learn uh, how to develop this sector in Brazil. How to make good and collaborative business in yeah. Brazil. So to you, if, if you, if you uh, explain to people what seeds to meet is, what do you say then? Well, I could, I could respond in two different ways. Uh, talking about technology, about a platform, I could say that's uh, a really good platform to, to match talents, to facilitate that people uh, and talents meet each other. Uh, and also uh, to help uh, co-working places to manage to manage their transaction on daily basis. So that's uh, on the technolo technology perspective. Uh, if you look, seeks to meet not just like a, a software or a, an, an app. Uh, it's a, it's a community. It's a global community of people that. Uh, uh, gives a lot of value uh, to the, the culture behind the co-working business, which is really related with uh, a sharing, caring, and gifting economy. Yeah. Um, I can imagine that uh, or every country is different, people are different, culture is different. Um, yesterday you were with all your international uh, uh, yeah. colleagues. Uh, is, is there a difference between the way um, a co-working works in different countries? Yes, I would say that there's a lot of difference, mainly on the beginning of, of, of the uh, structuring of the market. Uh, but I would say that on a medium long term, it, it becomes equal. Uh, I would say that uh, on the beginning, uh, there is uh, the process of building trust and, and talking about a share, shared vision. I think the process to build trust and to build uh, a shared vision is very different. Uh, how people connect, how they build trust, how they talk about building a, a common future. So I would say that the process uh, to build trust is very different. Mm -hmm. uh, but by, by when, I believe that when this kind of uh, business or sector uh, it's more mature, uh, it's, it's becoming equal because people uh, maybe uh, bring back uh, the trust to connect to each other, to connect with, with, with yourself. And on that phase, I think it's, it's more similar. Countries for get for, more for some of our viewers, it might sound a little bit vague. And in, okay. in, in, in uh, you know, uh, words people maybe don't understand exactly. What, what in your opinion, is, that is the, the main difference between like uh, buildings like spaces where you can rent, uh, you know, a desk okay. in an office okay. or a co-working environment you are talking yeah, I, about. Yeah, I would say that like uh, you have like levels of sharing. Maybe the first level of sharing, the one that maybe we are now in Brazil, you share resources, you share like, spaces, physical infrastructure. Like you rent one desk yeah. in a shared... Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you rent offices, you rent tables, you rent meeting rooms. Yeah. And I would say that when you, when you are on this uh, uh, first level or layer of sharing, uh, it, uh, it requires less trust. You're sharing a good a resource. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more a transaction. Yeah, yeah, it's more a transaction. But I yeah. would say that in Brazil we are on that stage now. 
We are breaking, breaking through an old economy where nobody would share a space. And in Brazil, we are now in the middle of a very strong crisis. So there's places that are becoming empty. So uh, it's, it's an impulse to try to share space, so to share infrastructure. I would say that that's the first level of sharing, and, and, it's, and it's where our, our sector is just right now. I would say that here in Holland, or I would say in, in, in some countries in Europe, you guys are already on a, on a second layer, on a second level of sharing that would uh, be sharing process, uh, process and relations. So it's just not sharing uh, hardwares or infrastructure, but you're, you are sharing process, uh, conversations. For example? For example, we can share a accounting system, we can share some kind of uh, uh, support, law support, we can share uh, web meeting software, we can share knowledge, we can try to... Uh, uh, or even your network, uh, you know? Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, even the network. That, I think, would be the second level of sharing. And so the first one would be resources. The second one would be uh, more like process. Uh, and, and, and that's that's sharing economy. And then uh, through the third and fourth level, I would say, we, we, we shift you from a sharing economy to a gifting economy. And then uh, you share uh, values, you share purpose, you share identity. So it's, 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 I think it's the third and fourth level of sharing, uh, but you need to pass through sharing the table, sharing the office, sharing some basic process of supporting each so other. So where in your opinion is uh, seeks to meet uh, in, in this? Uh, well, uh, I, I would say, I would say I would second to third level. Okay. I, th I would say that it's... it's uh, was, was it interesting to you to see how they organize themselves in uh, Utrecht? Well, uh, I think it, because it's clear that uh, the, the, the business is not related to, to selling square meters. It's not no. related to uh, price no, of... For people uh, who, of, who don't uh, know them, they're in Utrecht at, at the train station at Hoog uh, And they, you don't have to pay to, to work yeah. there. You even get a free lunch. Yeah. Uh, and the idea is that you share your knowledge, your network... Yes. And, and because of that, add value to the business. Yes, yeah. and doing that, in seats to meet in, in this specific location, uh, it doesn't have to need a sales team. It doesn't need to have a desktop or a help desk helping people to answer their, their, their doubts. Because all the community around the meeting space, because there is a meeting space that's, that's rented, mm -hmm. and there's all these communities that are working on desk space that are there uh, sharing something more than, than infrastructure, something more than just process. They are, they are, they are creating a community. Right. And that, that, that creation, that community creation, generated business to the meeting rooms. So it's a good combination um, uh, between a, what we could say a traditional business of renting a meeting room and a, a, a social relational business where we're there creating relations and, 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 and and transaction with social capital, not with financial capital. Why, why, is, why is it important that we or you uh, go to that third or fourth phase? Why, why is it important? Well, uh, I believe we are coming up to a moment where resources or exploration phase of, of the planet, it's, it's reaching its, its limit. So uh, for me, it's, it's clear that we need to uh, start sharing, uh, uh, buying less sharing more uh, what we have in the planet and, uh, and looking for ways to reconnect to, to our planet, to Earth. So I think we, we came up to a limit where there's, there's, there's no much resources to buy and selling and to properties to have. And I think we came up to a model, to a moment where we need to start sharing resources. There's, no, there's limitation now. Of yeah, the then, that we have. What is interesting to me is that you already <coughs> mentioned that Brazil is in a deep economic crisis. I mean, it was going very well for, <coughs> for many long, years yeah. and it was a very promising economy, part of the BRIC countries and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it completely collapsed. And now in, in a crisis, you start talking about immaterial values. Is it not a time in Brazil that people yeah. care about just yes. having a job and earning their salaries and, and then that the things you mentioned is very far away. Yeah, I don't, I, well, actually I think to, to start this shift that I think it's, it's, a, it's a needed shift, 
uh, of uh, a way we do business. I think we need to shift to a more collaborative way and human way and uh, people-based way to do business. I think uh, global-wide, it, we came to a limit. So in Brazil, it's just an economical crisis that's, going, that's being the shift that's it's making people uh, conscious of what they're doing. Yeah, it's like a, like a, s- a slap in your face. Slap in the face uh, yeah. That that in Brazil is now uh, the, the economical crisis. But I, if you see all around, there's there's today different events, but calling to the same the same change, the same transformation. So in Brazil, uh, we went really well during almost 10, 12 years. Yeah. Uh, and now we're not going well anymore. So there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of buildings that were built that are get it's, they are getting empty right now. So for for I think normally this change starts with some problem really related to the the, 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 the regular business, the, the business yeah. as usual. Yeah. There's no business as usual anymore. So what what are we going to do? Yeah. So maybe share. So so yeah, share. So, yeah, so it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you I also like have a lot of people now in Brazil who lost their job and are starting something up on, yes, on the individual basis. Yeah, Brazil is considered uh, in, in research that are done uh, in, in, in the world, one of the most entrepreneurship countries. People there are very creative. They, they want to take risk. They want to, they are to use their, their creativity to do something new. Uh, so I think there's one side of Brazil that's really, really good on this moment. So we can create new models, we can create new business, we can uh, propose a new experience. So it's, it's a lot of people are, are also on this movement of uh, new business development based on shared economy concepts. And also there is the traditional model that people are getting unemployed and some of them, they don't have the attitude to to build something new. So mm-hmm. we are facing two, the two moments right now. Uh, our business, the business that I'm related there, they are growing. Uh, they are growing in this moment of crisis. But those are business that are related to collaboration. And then I've been working with business collaboration, creating networks between companies for more than 10 years. And in the last two or three years, huge companies that in the past never never look at this kind of, of process, they are, well, now it's maybe it's time to collaborate. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so basically you think that the, the current crisis in, <coughs> in Brazil is also the start of something new. Yeah, I'm not, I have no doubt about that. Yeah, interesting no times. So. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and uh, you say, uh, you talk about uh, sharing and the various uh, phases uh, of it, but you talk about business as well. Uh, so, so business. What, what is what? What is the business for you in in the sharing economy? Well, I think it's it's. Uh, if you talk about uh, this co-working sector, uh, you could say that the business is how you can occupy a square meters that are empty or that are not being used on a hundred percent of its potential. How can you use better uh, a square meter? How can we use better our space? And you can use it better in basically two different ways. One may be traditional way, that's uh, using it more, uh, uh, renting more more desks or having more people paying for an hour of used space or increasing our way of uh, making money on a monthly base. That would be the traditional way to try to use your exit better. And the other way, it's how you can use the spaces to connect your talents. So once you have people matching their talents and uh, opening up itself to talk to other people, this, this uh, what, what Sits to Meet calls as a serendipity machine, these this, this, uh, meetings, they can generate ideas and they can generate new organizations to transform this idea into a new business. Yeah or a sustainable business. So I believe there's, uh, if, you, if you look at a square meter, you can use it better and you can promote that talents get together physically in a space. So I would say that that's it's what about a co-working uh, business. Okay, then, then today, uh, or yes, and yesterday there was this conference about co-working yeah. organized by, by Seeds to Meet. Uh, uh, of course, in, in the Netherlands, uh, the economy is in, in a different stage uh, compared to Brazil. What did you learn? 
Did you hear something new? Well, I could I could give you a very strong example. Yesterday, I went to visit one huge building here in in Amsterdam. Yeah. That was which uh, one? Uh, I, I, it is it's supposed to be a building where ABN Amro Bank was. Oh yeah, the new and, and place then, where uh, Google with the next web is going to start. Yeah, to, yeah and then yeah. then was I, I Scotland Royal Bank and yeah. but we we visit this place where it's going to be built a new co-working place. Yeah. Uh, they are going to also use seats to meet as as the connecting and talent matching platform, but I, I went there on this building and the, this building is empty for four years. Uh, they they keep the air conditioning on every day because it's cheaper to keep the air conditioning on every day than turn it off because maybe they 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 need to re restart it again and it's very expensive. So uh, I would say that to see a building like that, four years empty, and how, how it can be uh, reorganized in a different way of doing business, it's not in Brazil, it's just right here. It was four years empty, mm -hmm. in, and with the air conditioning on every day, yeah. with a lot of uh, costs and maintenance and security, Everything there. Yeah, I imagine it's not even hot so, here. So I, <laughs> I imagine that's the same process in Brazil. Maybe the owners of this property, they they started to rethink how to make business. It, it, it was co probably what's costing some some good money to maintain it empty. So let's think differently. Can we just rent a floor, or we just want to rent the whole building? Yeah, and then then in the the, the way. And the concepts of co-working in, in a conference like you attended, did you pick up something completely new, a new insight in, in you're going to take back home to Brazil and, and use? Uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, some good insights. Uh, are, are all the insights related to the same questions, uh, but all, all those insights... Uh, Goes goes to a to a direction of how uh, a community of spaces or uh, entrepreneurs can collaborate between them to make this sector, the co-working sector, grow uh, fast and sustainable. Uh, when we get together, we were I think in almost 14 different countries there. So we had China, we had Hungary, Serbia, Brazil, Spain. And when we get together there to talk about how can we improve and innovate together, uh, that brings a lot of, of new ideas. Mm -hmm. But m maybe the, the, the main side is, is, is related to this process of getting together, talking about uh, a challenge that we have, and come up with local solutions. I think the insight is how can we uh, make more meetings like that. Where yep. you where can put together physically or using the internet, but how can we establish a, a more organized way to talk with different people, different countries, talking about the same sector? That's something really special too. The, it's a conference really really focused on the co-working sector. So it's not something really yeah. open that you're talking about lots of different business. No, we're there talking about how can we create. Now, a, a, a co-working or places that you care that you can live and work on a different way, mm. uh, with uh, caring yeah. and with more productivity too. In uh, seats to meet started in the Netherlands, <coughs> of course. Uh, but what can um, the Netherlands seats to meet the Netherlands learn from you? Learn for us. Well, actually, I think there's a, there's already a, a good exchange. Uh, happening because the the moment in Brazil the the culture the way to build trust uh, among our people is, is quite different. Uh, so I think there is there is a learning process of how a seat to meet uh, at the first moment as a technology, a software. How can uh, how can it uh, support a trust building process? The trust building process is something really specific from Brazil. And I, I think that seats to meet in, in Holland, uh, uh, following and being together with different countries, uh, it's going to learn a lot of how the, 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 the trust is, is being built around uh, space, physical spaces. Mm -hmm. And that also, once again, can create a, a collect, collective uh, knowledge that can be uh, spread through the software or through meetings like that 
the one that we mm. just made yesterday. Mm. So, so I also like to take uh, questions from uh, Twitter. Uh, uh, Berta Boer, who is watching, he's asking, uh, Brazil <coughs> has a business culture of protective network and even restrictive legislation. How long uh, will that take to shift this? Well, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't have that much knowledge on, on the regulation on the internet, on how it's protected or not protected. What I can tell it's uh, on our daily business development in the co-working sector, we don't have any, any problem with protection. We are just okay. being, being open to, 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 a, to a developing process. Okay, so you, you are not bothered or... No, uh, it doesn't affect us. It the, doesn't the affect you. No, okay. no. Um, the, the, in, in, in the Netherlands, there's also a big discussion that, that co-working and the, the individualization of the, the labor market, uh, you know, is a big thing. Okay. Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of people work as independent professionals now in the Netherlands and people are also, some people are complaining that they undermine the social system and... You know, the, the position of the labor unions is, is threatened by that. Okay. Um, do you have in, in, in Brazil this kind of, you know, discussions about, you know, co-working in relation to, mm. you know, individual <coughs> people uh, working as a professional? No, I think, uh, uh, I think the sector of co-working did not reach uh, a critical mass in Brazil to, to start to question some legal stuff that can affect the business. Okay. I don't think so. Uh, what we do know is uh, that Brazil is growing fast on the number of, uh, of uh, individual workers. Yeah. Uh, well, there are some statistics that in, in 2020, um, almost, almost half of the, the world population will be working uh, as independent as, as professionals. Independent professionals. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that brings me another reflection uh, to share with you about the insights of yesterday. That's the, the biggest challenge. It's not on the individual work and not on the corporate side. It's on the, this middle way, how to build small and effective groups. Uh, uh, what, what was common yesterday in some of the discussion, uh, that we need to relearn how to cooperate personally in, in small groups. In small groups, I would say five, seven, eight people at maximum. But how can small groups Co real cooperate, real connect with themselves, real create uh, an identity and cre create like a, a, a energy as, as a part, as a group. Because individually it's um, like a freelancer, maybe it's, 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 it's a solitary way to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't have to, to worry about team building. You have a task, you have a job, you have that, you, you deliver that and then you go to another task. Uh, on the other side, you don't have the freelancer stuff. You need to. You need to. You have a job. You have a timetable to, to do, and you you have the tasks. In between, uh, it's it's where I think uh, the co-working process can can help to leverage this, this learning of uh, being uh, together in small groups and operating on a very productive way. I think that's in Brazil, in Holland, in China, everywhere. I think there is a knowledge that needs to be uh, learned again. Mm -hmm. Another question from Twitter, from uh, Bram Koster. He says you have a background as a business developer. Yes, uh, he, I do. He researched you. Uh, I yes, think. I yeah. do. Uh, what <laughs> is still, the, still doing. What is the <laughs> business behind that soft side of co-working? Because you also tell us an idealistic soft story. Yeah, oh, well, actually, soft values. Yeah, business, so what is the business behind it? Business for me uh, was always a social business. I cannot see business as not a social activity. So for me, uh, when you talk about profit or non-profit organization, I don't believe there is no profit organization. Is this exists like a social profit organization. So for me, when you look at business as a social profit organization, one of the dimensions is the economical dimension, but there is other dimensions like uh, what we call the philosophical dimension of a business. Yeah, so you say you have to earn money, otherwise you can't exist, but still... You yeah, of course. I, I always say that the money or the, the money, is, it, it, it cannot be the end of that, but it's really needed for, to support a, a business development process. Uh, for example, now we need air to, to breathe, right? But I do not live to breathe, I live to other things. 
Huh? Maybe drink a beer. That's a good thing that I can live for. <laughs> live but, but not <laughs> my objective is to drink a good beer and not, yeah. uh, not breathe the air, yeah. but I need the oxygen, right? Otherwise, yeah. there's no beer in the future or in, <laughs> or in some minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, money is needed, profit is needed, but on a social way. So that's what co-working is, is about too. How can you develop the social, social dimension, the purpose dimension inside of a business? Okay, now you've seen the examples in the Netherlands, uh, Seeds to Meet. What can we learn from how you do things in Brazil? Well, actually, I think in Brazil we have a, a great experience on putting small and medium companies to work together. Okay. So we, we've been doing it there for quite a few years. And in Brazil, we have some, some variables that uh, helps us on this process. We have a very strong internal market with more than 200 million people. Uh, our, our retailers... Uh, they are very uh, distributed in country, so we don't have domination of big retailers. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of small and family-owned and operated stores that sells foods, uh, construction material, uh, medicines. And, and with a big market not concentrated and not organized, there is space to innovate on distribution networks. So in Brazil, we have, we have space to innovate in different business models. So that helps us also to put small and medium companies or together groups in, in, yeah. in a process of learning together. And since they don't have uh, that huge pressure to do that in one year, they can, they can have some more time to learn and, and do. I think we had developed in Brazil a, an expertise of building these communities of small and medium organizations. And that's, that's something that I think uh, Holland could learn from us. Oké, okay. thank you very much. Het is een plezier. Jullie bedankt voor het kijken. Uh, kijk je nu, dan uh, blijft er nog eventjes van zo direct praten. We, uh, verder praten we internationaal. Verder Litouwen is dan het, uh, de, de plek van het, uh, van het onderwerp. Um, even de bedankjes aan het uh, slot. Natuurlijk Streamzilla uit Groningen, die ervoor zorgde dat de stream uh, tot je kwam. Uh, ik moet even de wagen nog uitlaten, maar ik kan, uh, ik kan uh, ondertussen hier... Uh, de stadshuiskamer waar we verblijven en wel even bijnemen. Bedankt voor ons nieuwe uh, onderkomen. Uh, 2ML die zorgt voor de hosting van uh, de website. Uh, en even kijken. Natuurlijk uh, de biersponsor Bierinko. Ik begin een beetje in te kakken, Stekel. Ja, je hebt los van je jetlag. Ja, ik heb last van ja, mijn jetlag. Hij, hij is net terug uit Austin. Als je uh, on demand kijkt over een paar maanden. <laughs> wij, wij zijn allebei net terug uit Austin. Dus een beetje gaat jetlag. Ja, dus... ik, ik ga een biertje voor je inschenken en dan gaan we verder met de volgende. Dat is goed, doen we. Dankjewel. Ja?